Hi everyone, my name is James, and welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. I've been getting a lot of requests from people in our community and from YouTube in general on how to align the blade of the table saw. And it has to be aligned to one of the miter slots, and today I'm going to show you how to do that, as well as some general table saw maintenance and stuff that I do kind of to tune up the table saw at the beginning of each year. Obviously, the first thing I need to do is clean my table saw blade, but I have been running exotics through it nonstop, very oily exotics for three days straight. Uh, so the stuff that I like to use is the Simple Green Pro HD cleaning solution. It's the purple cleaning solution. This is the one that's designed for table saw blades and uh, even router bits. And I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail on cleaning this because I do have a dedicated video on just exactly how to do that. So I will put a link to that video in the description below if you'd like to take a look at that. We'll give that a minute to soak while we do some cleanup. And if this is your first time here, we'd really appreciate it if you took the time to hit that subscribe button. If you like the videos that you see, if you click the bell icon, then you'll get notified of future videos as they come out. Thank you. Once the blade has been scrubbed, and it does require almost always uh, some work with a brass brush in order to get it clean, uh, the first step to do is just to dry the blade off all the way around and paper towels work really good for this job. Once the blade is dry, I like to give my all my table saw blades and my router bits too, for that matter, uh, a good coat of the Bostic Blade Coat. What this is is a dry lubricant and it bonds really well to the metal. In addition to that, it also prevents the pitch and resin from building up on the blade and it decreases the friction of the blade going through the wood. So I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step how to do this with my particular jig. Mine is made by a line it. Uh, it's a great jig and I'll put a link to this in the description below. And basically it comes with this bar which is going to ride in your miter slot. And right off the bat it's actually just a little bit smaller than the slot which is normal. You can see it wiggles back and forth there. And that's what these little pins are for here. Yeah, so there's a screw uh, slot on the other side and we will screw those out to get them to adjust to a nice fit to the uh, to the miter slot itself. And they're actually spring-loaded little ball bearings, so you can actually screw them out just a teeny bit bigger than the size of that slot opening. And once you get them just right, they can't be too big, of course, but once you get them just right, it'll kind of pop in, and since they're spring-loaded, they will hold a nice tight fit for you. And that tight fit is essential to get an accurate reading on where that uh, table saw blade is in relation to the miter slot. Next I've got the crossbar set in place here that's going to be mounted to it and now I have to raise the bar that's sliding in the miter slot up to the level of the surface of the saw because everybody's miter slot is at a different depth this particular gauge gives you the ability to raise and lower this bar so that it fits perfectly in the slot. Once that's done, we'll pick one of these holes and we'll screw this thing together here. Of course, it's a good idea probably if I have it turned the right way, which of course you'll see here. I didn't. I haven't used it in probably a year, that's why. So I'm going to guess that the middle hole is going to be a good distance away from the blade, and we'll find out in just a second. And next I'm going to check it. it. It slides real smooth. And you can see that's the thing that raised the, uh, the miter bar up to the, right, uh, up to the right height for us. And so we're going to pull this screw out and I'm going to mount the dial indicator. And the whole thing is actually really, really simple. There are good written instructions, and it even comes with a little DVD with some videos on it to show you how to put it together. But really, there's only two screws and then, you know, the height adjustment. Uh, so it's not, not too hard to figure out. Uh, if you ever forget it, um, you can just play with it for a couple of minutes, and you can kind of see how it all goes together. There are a lot of people who will attempt this alignment with a ruler, and you can do that. I just, I really prefer the accuracy of a dial indicator which goes to the thousandth of an inch and you can see that I actually have it probably a little bit too close to the blade I'm gonna to have to compress this uh, this part of the dial indicator in maybe a little bit too far uh, for that to be comfortable and so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this screw out and I'm gonna move it back one slot to the screw slot before it there and I think that's gonna be the right size for my table saw if I'm gonna use the right miter slot 
So there's lots of adjustability depending on your saw. Your miter slot's obviously going to be in a different location, so you'll just adjust it to whatever you do. And we'll compress the dial indicator in a little bit to put it over onto the saw blade itself. Now that that's all set, you can see I've made a little X mark on my blade here, and I want to use this same spot to check the dial indicator on both sides, the, the close side and the far side, so that I will rotate my blade around and use that. This way I'll eliminate any potential error that might occur from having a warped blade. So I reset the dial to indicator to zero, and I'm going to move it forward and check it to the other side, and you can see I'm going to come right up to my same little X. And if you take a look, it looks like I'm five and a half thousandths out of perfect. So it's out, it's out quite a bit, but it's pretty easy to fix. The owner's manual tells me that there are three bolts total. The one on the right, not the two in the middle here, and the one on the left, and one in the dead center of the back that hold my cast iron top to the table saw. So if I loosen two of these three bolts, I'll actually be able to pivot this cast iron top around the base and that's going to bring the table saw blade into alignment with the miter slots so we can tap it with a rubber mallet on the left or the right and after a few tappings and a few measure checkings we'll see that we bring it into alignment I'll now do I'm doing my final test here for the video and I've got my gauge set to zero I'm on my black X on the left I'm going to rotate it all the way around to the right which is the far side and if we take a look, we see we come into within about a half of a thousandth of an inch, which is really pretty good. And that's all there is to aligning the blade. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those bolts back, and my daughter Maya is going to continue with the rest of the maintenance or the tune-up on our table saw. And that's going to start with cleaning out the inside. We actually have good dust collection, or reasonably good dust collection, but no matter what, it still builds up inside of the table saw, especially on the gears over there on the right-hand side, which you can see. Those are the gears that raise and lower the blade and that tilt the blade 45 degrees. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is vacuum out the whole interior compartment of the table saw. This might be a little bit easier for you if you have a contractor saw. Uh, maybe a lot of your dust will just fall on the ground and maybe it won't build up quite as much. But it is important to try to get all of the dust out of the interior, at least away from the gears and stuff like that. And you can see once that's all done, there's uh, quite a difference on the inside of the saw. And now the gears are a lot more exposed and easy to see what's happening there. The next step, and probably a very critical step, is to lubricate the gears. Uh, this helps us raise and lower the blade and tilt the blade to various bevels. And without this, the table saw just wouldn't operate as smoothly. Now, what I'm using there is a product called PG2000, made by Pro Gold. This one happens to be in a squirt bottle, but that's the old packaging. The new ones today come in a spray can, an aerosol spray can. But they're both very good. It's one of the best solutions out there. Obviously, if you were to put grease on these, that would attract dust, and then you'd actually have a problem. Almost right away, you wouldn't be able to use your gears because the dust would adhere. Whereas this actually repels dust. Okay, once the inside of the table saw is all done and lubricated, then I like to turn my attention to the top to finish up. I typically clean the top of it with acetone because I get oils building up. We do cut a lot of exotics and stuff spills on it. So cleaning it up with acetone brings it back to a nice pristine surface. And on top of that, I will put glide coat, not to be confused with uh, blade coat, Glide coat is something that's formulated just for the top of the cast iron. This will bond to the cast iron and actually decrease your friction significantly more than it would with paste wax. Uh, I'm actually not sponsored by uh, Bostic Glide Coat, uh, Blade Coat, or any of them. It's just a product I like to use. Uh, paste wax also works well. I just don't think it works quite as good as this stuff. I do spray this right over the plastic throat plate and along the edge of my fence as well. Anything where wood is going to be moving or sliding, we can even slide it over the wood portion of the outfeed. Uh, that's just going to decrease the friction and make cutting that much easier. After that, we typically let it sit until it dries up just a little bit and then we buff it off. Uh, they recommend that you use two coats, although I think that might be a marketing ploy. I have never found that two coats make it feel or seem any slicker than one. so. I just put one.
All right, once the surface is now perfectly clean, no dust or anything in the way, I want to check the blade. Uh, this is a stainless steel square. It's a very economical square. We'll talk about those again in just a second. But I, I have an electronic uh, indicator as to where my blade is at on the saw itself, but I always manually check it every time I return it to zero. And obviously I figured this is a tune-up, so I'm gonna do that here too. We're gonna adjust the blade back and forth the bevel until I get that perfectly straight on. And once it's dialed in exactly, then I will reset the button down below the saw back to zero. Next, we'll need to align the table saw fence up to the miter slot. We could use a dial indicator, but that's pretty slow. The quickest way to do it is to just use a small square. And I'm just going to shift the fence over until the square is in perfect alignment with the fence and the edge of the slot. Once that happens, then I'll slide it back and forth along the slot and the fence, making sure it comes in perfect and complete contact from the front to the back. Now mine was right on, but if it weren't, there's an adjustment on the fence, and all fences are slightly different, but I'll show you how it works on mine. There is a little set screw in there uh, that takes an Allen key, and that drives this little wedge uh, in and out, and so that would push the left side of the, that, that part out, which would shift my uh, table saw fence to the right at the back. And then on the opposite side, there's the exact same thing. There's another Allen key. Uh, set up to a screw that's going to drive that in and it's going to push a wedge out on that side. So by manipulating these two wedges that brings the table saw fence into perfect alignment. It's also important that the fence itself is square to the tabletop and not canted to the right or to the left. So we'll use a square to check that as well. And all table saw fences, quality table saw fences at least, have an adjustment for this. If you look on mine, I have these two little bumpers. They're made of plastic, and they're, they're a hex head, so an Allen key or an Allen wrench will fit into those. And I can drive these up or down on either side, which will bring the face of the fence into square with the table saw. Finally, the very last thing to check to get your table saw perfectly tuned up for the year is the alignment of the blade with your measuring tape, if you have one. And what I do for that is I bring the fence all the way over until the uh, blade itself just perfectly touches the aluminum. I can barely hear the blade whispering against the edge of the aluminum here. And then I'll lock the fence down. And we'll go over to the indicator and I'll unscrew it. And you can see it shifts left and right. And I know it's perfectly at zero because it, the blade is just touching it. And so I'll make sure that it's set here perfectly at zero. And that is the last step, the last thing you have to do to fully tune up your table saw. And all this started because we needed a blade alignment, but that's something we should do every year anyway. There is just one other thing that I wanted to point out here. And if you're like me, you really like woodpecker squares. Uh, the problem is is they're pretty expensive and so I use them a lot and I just didn't have the money to buy a bunch of them I, I like to have different sizes available so I found these on Amazon and I thought I would share these are stainless steel squares so they're not going to dent if I drop them and they're actually accurate to three ten thousandths of an inch whereas the woodpecker square is accurate to 85 ten thousandths of an inch so it isn't really close at all and in fact I think four or five of these I bought collectively for the price of the woodpecker square so I'm just gonna throw a link in the description down below in the event that you're interested uh, they have these both in uh, the woodworking type format square with the lip at the edge or the machinist type square which is what I prefer without the lip at the edge and just something to check out in case you're interested and that's it for today folks thanks for watching